What's up, Buck? I'm Doug. And I'm Eric. And we are DD in the Garage, and today we're talking junkyard snow blowers, junkyard equipment in general. Really, tis the season where people wander out to the shed, they try to start the old dog, and they find out that the digital leader is just not going to dial the light this year. Then what do they do, Eric? They roll it to the curb. And then what happens? Oh, we come to find it. That's right. If you drive around <laughs> this time of year, probably not in your more well to do neighborhoods, but Kind of, kind of areas we roll in. You'll see lawn mowers, you'll see snow blowers, weed whackers, backpack blowers, whatever you can imagine with a tiny engine on it. Somebody has tried and failed to get started, and now they're leaving it at the curb or poorly maintenance it and it exploded. Exactly. <laughs> any, any number of things. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, what do you do when you get a hold of one of these machines, specifically snow blowers, because it is broken snow blower season, being November. Uh, what should you look over? How can you get one of these running? This one we got for free. We mentioned it in our last video. The guy put it up on Facebook Marketplace. He said, free to a good home. <laughs> it stopped in the middle of using it. Uh, I put fresh gas in it. I put a fresh spark plug in it. I just don't know what the problem is. The only thing we've done to it, we popped the float bowl off just to confirm our suspicion, and as Eric would say, it was full of crustaceans. <laughs> so we know the carb is going to be part of it. What we're going to do real quick is, uh, another thing people are selling, uh, doing this time of year is selling cheaply. Oh, it doesn't run, it just needs a little work. Here are some things you, the viewer, can look at to make sure the digital leader you're bringing home is actually going to delete some digits and throw some snow. All right, now the first thing you're going to want to do when you pull up on one of these fancy pants machines that allegedly does or does not run is go ahead and make sure she's not seized up. You remember that lawnmower we brought home was seized. Give you a pull start a tug. You want to make sure burps. it's got compression. Hear a couple burps. Make sure it doesn't sound like there's marbles in there. Uh, next thing you're going to want to go ahead and check on the fluids there. Make sure it's got oil. Make sure the oil looks okay. There's not a bunch of confetti in there. Yeah. Those liquid dinosaurs don't look too bad, eh? No, actually I mean, not it that needs, bad. needs a change in them, but there's no water in there. Yeah. Doesn't smell like gas. The next thing you're going to have to do, Eric's favorite, give the old gas tank a whiff. Does it smell good? <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> Come on, Buck, amateur out. It does now, smell like some varnish, though. You want to make sure, uh, you're just determining, in, does it have good gas in it, or does it have three-year-old gas uh, that's all chunky from the dang ethanol they put in there? That's going to, not a deal breaker necessarily, but it might inform you as to whether or not you're going to have carb issues. Uh, next thing you can do, none of these are deal breakers, but make sure everything works. Primer bulb works, linkage links, twisty bits twist, the key is existing. Make sure that uh, you can fly your, your X-Wing here. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> uh, after that, we know this um, plug is brand new because he told us and it's obvious, but you might want to slam the plug out of there, look for mechanical damage. Uh, additionally, you can tell a lot from a motor about uh, how the carb looks. You may or may not want to try and make sure the electric start works. For me, that doesn't really matter. It's not that cold up here that we need it. Uh, next, on a unit like this, you're going to want to make sure, or at least uh, test out the whole auger setup. And here's how you do that. First things first, disconnect the plug. Whether the, the motor is allegedly a runner or not, disconnect the plug, because there's a reason we call these digital leaders. Uh, they, they'll bite you. So just for safety, you don't want this thing lighting off when you're doing the next bit. Find your auger control, depress that, use a clamp or a buddy. I got a clamp and a buddy. And we're gonna go over here. Now this unit is a two state, two stage, Jiminy Christmas amateur hour. Two stage, which means it's got the first stage here, which is this main auger, and then it's got an impeller in the back there, which is what's gonna uh, take the snow the auger grabs and throw it up and do the throw in for the snow thrower. Uh, older ones and some less expensive models will not have that second stage, they won't have the impeller. I'm not a big fan of those, I avoid those, but I guess if you're staring down a free blower, free is free, right? Now, what we're doing here is making sure that the belts up in here are tight, toit, and, and um, working. And we're making sure everything down here is spinning as it should. So with that auger control depressed, Eric's gonna go ahead and give us a pull. You see our impeller is going real well, and our auger is turning. Now the impeller is supposed to move much quicker than the auger, so that all looks like good shape. Additionally, while you're down here, you can check out your shear pins. A, make sure they're there. We can tell they are because the augers are locked to, uh, to the shaft. And make sure they're actually shear pins, because a lot of people like to replace these with uh, bolts, and that's the kind of thing a guy's gonna wanna know before he tries to send this thing on down the road. Now, this one is definitely a shear pin. I'm not certain about that one. We're gonna have to look into that later, but basically, the fact that all this is turning means the belts and the shaft and this gearbox are all turning. These gearboxes strip out if you don't use a shear pin. You don't use a shear pin, you hit a big old rock and you send these things frying into atmosphere. At this point, I mean, you've gotten to know the old girl. It's time to take her on a date. All right, so here's how we're gonna start today. I'm gonna work on getting this carb 
guard off. Eric's gonna work on getting the fuel tank drained. And uh, we'll go from there. Like I said, we already know that uh, King Crustacean has moved into our carburetor. So that's coming off, and I think that's probably gonna be our only <laughs> issue. Let's get the bad gas out, get the carburetor off. And let's get to work, Buck. We're yeah. burning, we're burning moonlight. All right, if you're picking up a um, digital leader on the side of the road, or even if you're paying 20 bucks for a not running unit, there's a good chance at some point you're gonna end up here. Uh, ethanol gas, I've ranted on that. Everybody on the internet has ranted about how ethanol gas is terrible and screws up your carb. Now, this one was actually like stuck when I pulled it off. So I think we're gonna find a lot of crust in here. Uh, what you're looking at here, most of these snowblowers use Tecumseh engines. This is one of the newer ones. Uh, it's non-adjustable. So on the older ones, which really nice, the simplicity uh, over there has it. Uh, it's got an adjustable uh, idle mixture, an adjustable uh, fuel mixture on the bottom. This doesn't have it. This is a dump valve so that at the end of the season you can dump all your gasoline out. And this is actually the main jet right here, uh, built into the <clears throat> bottom bowl nut. And this is how Eric and I confirmed we were dealing with a, uh, a unit that had been parked next to the Edmund Fitzgerald for a while. Can you see what that bad boy looks like? She looks pretty crusty. If you can't, uh, I'll tell you right now, it's green. So that's interesting. <laughs> it's got a bunch of green goo on it. All right, so a better view. There's that bottom main jet. I can already tell it's gummed straight up. This hole right here, you should be able to see right through it. I can't see through it. So that's why it stopped mid-run, because it picked up some of this junk that's in the bottom of this bowl, and it slammed it through this, and I'm sure it's everywhere else. So uh, you're just your typical cleaning. I've done plenty of carb cleaning videos on this channel, so I'm going to gloss over it. Um, I'll leave a, a card to another video where I do a little bit more in-depth carb cleaning if you're super interested in that. But basically... I think everybody at this point knows how to clean a carb. I'm gonna try to sneak out our peen. I'm ticked off. I ordered some really nice Knipex pliers and they were supposed to be here in time for me to work on this video tonight and they're not here. Oh, I know, Knipex, that's... that's pretty crusty. I mean, everything's pretty crusty here. Let's look at our, our needle. It's actually pretty clean. If you can see there, needle's not too bad, but uh, the rest is, I mean, there's literally flakes of junk in there. So that, I mean, that's all, that's really all we're looking at. Uh, the emulsion tubes on these get pretty messed up. So um, we're gonna start spraying everything down the way one would if they were cleaning out a carburetor. My personal favorite trick for getting a carb clean, take a wire, a brass wire brush pull out one of the uh, strands and use that along with carb cleaner to uh, free up all these holes that are full of crud and crap and dust and dirt and junk and mud and blood and a beer. There it is. Get it, get it. And the shovel. The last three times I cleaned a carb, I got carb cleaner in my eye. So my goal for tonight is to not get carb cleaner in my eye. I lost my needle. There it is. <laughs> he said he's gonna get it in my eye. <laughs> Actually, I'm okay with that. I know you are. <laughs> so I'm literally, I need to get a better up close and personal camera. Oh, my wire broke. But uh, I mean, I'm literally just like digging goop out of this main jet. So I think what we're gonna do, take a little container here and just let this main jet soak for a while. There we go, put that aside. And then we'll be able to clean that a little better in a minute. Since I'm trying not to use the carb kit, I am going to take off... Ooh, this rubber seal is real bad. Yeah, I saw that. Real bad. I'm still going to try to reuse it. <laughs> but uh, regardless, if you're trying to reuse your rubber seal, make sure you take it off or the brake clean will uh, make that decision for you. Let's get that all nice and gooped. Take our brass wire brush. Go to town. Being careful of this uh, dump valve, you don't want to screw that up or it will leak forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Right, this is good enough for government work. Clean up our little pin here so that it's easier to shimmy jam on that guy later. We're going to open up all of the everything. Start blasting off on the inside of this. Open up our choke. You can't see the junk that's coming out of this car right now. It's, yeah, it's gnarly. wild. <laughs> right here in the side where there would be an adjustment if this were a um, adjustable carb, there's like, 
I don't know, it's not a jet. It's some kind of air, uh, something or another, but if you pull that out, it has holes in it, and I can tell this one's plugged up, so this wouldn't have run. If this is plugged up, I, I admit I don't know exactly what that does on an adjustable carb. That's where your low speed adjustment is. On the non-adjustable ones, they just throw this thing in, and I don't know, it does something. It has a pass-through in it, and if it's not passing through, yeah, I just will just dunk that in there with the main jet, come back for that guy later. So basically every hole and pass-through and passage, and this is for any carb, uh, spray stuff down it, and if you don't see it come out somewhere, you have a problem. That's <laughs> in the mouth, not the eye, but the mouth. It's just inevitable when you work like a monkey with a toolbox. Like I do. Uh, let's clean these little last few bits and bobs, and then we'll get her put back together. Try to seal this against the red hose without hopefully shooting Eric in the face and see if stuff comes out the sides. <laughs> <laughs> trying to hide from it. I know you can't see on the camera, but I can see here. Yep, it's coming out the sides, so that's good. We'll throw that back into the car body. Jimmy jam that bad boy back in there. Uh, this, there's nothing that you set. There's no like in and then out, a turn in a quarter or anything like that. You're just screwing this in and getting it snug. Maybe this is, I don't really, I don't know what this does. I think it's fed by this, so maybe that's your um, your pilot jet on these, but then what would it have been? It's probably your pilot jet because that's where the idle circuit is. So just get it in there, barely snug it down. This main jet is still pretty grody. Oh, can you see the scum that I just pulled out of there? Can you see that? It's like... How much more is in there? It's like lake slime. <laughs> well, yeah, it's most of it. This would have been good. a good candidate for a rebuild. Like, just screw it. Just rebuild the darn thing. But we're already here, aren't we? We're doing the YouTubes. Why not keep it rolling? So a side story. When we picked this up, the guy said it went boom. So Doug and I instantly like, oh, maybe something else has worked with it. Oh, you okay? Oh, that one was in the eye. <laughs> That was the best one yet, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. I'm it looked blind. like you got mace from my angle. <laughs> Amateur hour. God. Christmas. <laughs> I watch other YouTubers do this, and they never end up with the crap in their eye. What am I doing wrong? Face shield? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I'm just, a, I'm just an idiot. PPE man? <laughs> All right, never mind. Don't take any of my advice. So we're going to put this thing back together. It goes back together the same way it came apart. Does that make sense? Jimmy jam your pin in there. Now, if you're looking at this thing... It should sit level in here, and if it doesn't, you can adjust. Well, I'll take it out to show you. If it doesn't, oh, my eye hurts. <laughs> do you need to go flush that How out? How many times can you get hit with brake clean before you have a problem? All right, if you look at your float, and this is for any carb, this tab right here, you can use that to adjust how high your, um, your, your bowl is sitting. It should be level. If it's sitting down too much, you're going to get... Uh, too much fuel, 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 amateur, what am I trying to say? If it's down too much, you can get too much fuel. If it's up too much, you can get not enough. You want fuel delivery to be right where the manufacturer intended. That's with a level throat brawl. So do that thing I just said. I, again, I said I was going to do a brief carb rebuild, and now I'm explaining <laughs> stuff. You went full death. I don't think you missed one. Uh, yeah, you got to make sure this shelf is lined up uh, so that your float has room for movements. And put that on like so. Tecumseh products. Tecumseh makes a real good motor for um, for this application. This seal's probably not gonna cut it. Though. Yeah, I'm seeing that just fall apart on uh, right now. You'd be surprised. We'll snug this mamma jamma down, and we are gonna put this back on the good old um, snar blower and see if she runs. Okay, we have the carburetor on, we got everything connected. Eric is going to slam a little bit of the good stuff in the old tank there. The gas you want is over in yonder corner. Uh, then we're gonna take her outside. It is dark right now because it's that time of year where the sun rises at like 11.30 and goes down at like 11.45. Uh, so you're just gonna have to deal with that, I apologize. Eric and I are hard working. People. So we have to play with our rusty, crusty, dusty stuff once the chitlins go to sleep. So this time of year, that means we're working in the dark. Um, how do I work this new fangled contraption well, on the all gas you, I fixed that gas tank, so all you do is unscrew it and she'll pour. Okay. Yeah. 
Is there anything worse than new <laughs> gas tanks, right? I found where to get the good ones. Where? ShopRite. ShopRite? I didn't think it was legal to sell them. You look on top of the freezers and they have the old school ones. That just pour. That just pour. Looks like it. That's, That's probably not it. Like. I couldn't believe it when I looked up. I'm like, that has an old school nozzle on it. <laughs> Alrighty. Throttle is throttling. Choke is choking. Key is keying. Gasoline is smelling. Gasoline <laughs> is smelling. Sparky Boy is connected. Let's roll this guy out into the fridge at night and see what happens. All right, I've got a wheel outside. Everything's put back together. The nice thing about these dump valves on here is that you can confirm we have fuel to the carb. That's muy bueno. Well, it's already pumped up. We're gonna choke it. We're gonna probably rev it about halfway up and see if she won't dial to life here. Tea bag, eh? Let's let's kill some choke. Let's put the choke back on. <laughs> Pull the choke all the way. Oops. Make sure the gas tank is actually closed. Come on, girl, I know you wanted to go. Success, boys, am I right? We Jimmy Jander, she dialed right to life. Now, here's the truth that I'm going to tell you. I was not kidding about it being very late at night. Uh, and while I'm not exactly in a uh, in an urban area, there are people down the laneway who would complain about us binging and banging on that unit tonight. So what we're going to do is we have success. Cheers, bud. Yeah. Silly sodas all around. Eric's buying. Uh, but in the light of day, we'll come out. We'll dial her to life again. I mean, obviously she works now. We'll test out the auger, we'll test out the transmission, we'll make her drive around, and uh, I'm gonna pair Erica's sails, so we're sending <laughs> this one down the road. <laughs> That's good for tonight. Next time you see us, we'll be testing on the old girl. Sorry we couldn't do it tonight, it's too dark. You're not gonna care, it's no. instantaneous. Yeah, right. I should just stop talking. Really, all I'm doing right now is prolonging <laughs> you from getting to the footage you wanna see. It's only bad news for us. We're gonna have to go inside and go to sleep tonight without getting a test on her. Yeah, I know, it's unfortunate. Catching the AM buck. Yeah. this sassy little digit deleter is ready for the first snowfall which yes right around the corner comment down there in the squawk boxes if you like the video like the video that's just common sense you like something like it subscribe to the channel you can go check us out on etsy we're still selling our jeep ugly christmas sweaters they've been selling like crazy get in the holiday spirit with a jeep ugly christmas sweater not bad there's other stuff over there as well if you'd like to support d and e that's about it it's actually thanksgiving day so i should probably get inside and watch some football and eat some turkey Happy Turkey Day to all of you all. Uh, gobble gobble till you wobble wobble, am I right? All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.